Hey agents, recently I've been seeing a lot of new players in the Division 2, which is great, but I've also been seeing a lot of fail builds. So in this video, we're going to talk about three keys to making a proper endgame build in the Division 2. It doesn't matter if you're playing PvE or PvP, or what your playstyle is. Your builds will be more effective if you keep these in the back of your mind. And I'm not saying don't be creative with your builds, because I know that's half the fun for a lot of players. Just be creative and smart about it. Before moving on, make sure to subscribe to my channel, blah 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 blah. Okay, let's go. The first key is synergy. Every aspect of your build from talents to attributes to weapon type should make sense. Somebody should immediately understand the goal of your build just by looking at it. For example, taking a look at this build, I can see the user has no idea what they're doing. Starting with the weapons, we have an SMG and an LMG. Sure, both of these weapons are viable and maybe even god roll, but there's no Sokolov or Petrov in the build, so already we're losing out on 10% damage. Then we can look at the mask, which is the named Night Watcher. This is a good mask with perfect rolls, but looking at our skills, we're not even using a pulse, so that 100% pulse skill haste is a complete waste. Next we have the Ridgeway's chest piece. This is a great chest piece and one of the strongest exotics in the game when used in the right build. But you know what? This is not the right build. We have no talents that are affected by applying status effects, so while this chest piece may slow targets and give you a modest heal, its true power is not being unlocked. The holster, while it may look great for a crit build, is our second Gilligard piece which gives 10% health. This is worthless and adds nothing to any build, so another wasted bonus. The knee pads suddenly have headshot damage as an attribute and are Eroldi, but we're not using a marksman rifle, nor is this a headshot build, so more wasted stats. These gloves would be great on a tank build, but this is far from a tank build. In fact, I don't even know what kind of build this is. We're getting 10% Hasbro, Explosive Resistance, and Status Effects. These are our only rolls for these three attributes on this build. So having only 10% of each of them isn't going to do anything for survivability or damage. So for this particular build, waste, waste, waste. And then the backpack. Our only piece of system corruption. You do not get any bonus from running one piece of a gear set you're basically just sacrificing one of your attributes. And the chest and backpack talents are only gained when you equip four pieces of the gear set. So while each of these pieces are very good with mostly perfect rolls, together we're wasting too many attributes and talents, making this build very weak. So do yourself a favor and take a minute, read what each talent does and think about it. Do these talents complement each other? If not, head over to the recalibration station and see which ones might be a better fit. Now let's check out another build. At first glance, everything makes perfect sense. The exotic marksman rifle with three pieces of Eraldi for marksman rifle damage, headshot damage and damage to armor, one piece provenance for headshot damage. Then we have the named DNH mask for an additional 20% headshot damage and contractor's gloves for more damage to armor. Headshot damage and handling rolled on most pieces, making this a very strong build with very few wasted stats. Judging by the skills, I would guess this is a PvP build, but could easily be used in PvE by adding a decoy to take advantage of the Mantis talent, a revive hive, and maybe rolling glass cannon or headhunter on the chest piece. So there you can see the difference between an effective build and a shit build. Just remember, not every attribute needs to be exactly what you need, but try to limit the number of wasted stats on your build as much as possible. The next key to making a build is knowing your content and playstyle. Like to play aggressive in PvP? Maybe Glass Cannon won't be your best option. Do you enjoy the turret drone build in PvE? Then you probably don't want Wicked on your backpack. Most of the time, different content requires different builds. While a Hunter's Fury with Memento and Intimidate may be extremely strong in solo heroic content, 
it will get you slaughtered in legendaries running in a group. Even in the different PvP modes, builds differ drastically. For example, the Memento Backpack can be very strong in the DZ by farming landmarks and then engaging in PvP. But it's pretty awful in Conflict. Again, just think about it. Can I build up Memento stacks in Conflict? In 4v4 PvP with Nova NPCs, it will be extremely hard. So you'll be missing out on a lot of the backpack's power. So I can't stress enough, just because a build is very strong in some content doesn't mean it will be strong in all content. When I took my conflict builds into the DZ, they were pretty ineffective, so I needed to make another build specifically for the DZ. Same goes for PvE, and if I were to run legendaries or raids, I would need to put unique builds together for those as well. So the final key to the mint, attributes, attributes, attributes. Assuming you're running a high-end build, you will have 14 attributes, including one for each weapon. And each attribute counts. That being said, if anyone tells you you need fully optimized attributes on all your pieces to be able to compete, ignore anything else they tell you, because they have no idea what they're talking about. Optimization is basically making your build look pretty. Missing 1% crit damage here or 1.5% status effects there will make virtually no difference to the effectiveness of your build. Having a skill damage or health attribute on a crit build will make a difference. Let's compare these two gloves. If I'm using a crit build, which would be better? The Seska mask has all the attributes I need, but the rolls are kinda low. The Walker Harris mask doesn't have ideal rolls, but everything is maxed out. For starters, both brand sets are great for DPS builds, assuming I have another Walker Harris piece in the build. The Walker Harris mask has 15% weapon damage compared to 9.9 .9 on the Seska, so we're already up 5% weapon damage on the Walker Harris. On to the secondary attributes. We have 10% Hasbro versus 11% crit damage. Having Hasbro on a crit build can be very useful, but assuming this is our only Hasbro roll, giving us 20% on our build, including the watch, this is a complete waste. On the Seska, we have 11% crit damage. Ask yourself, which is better, missing 1% crit damage or having a dead attribute? For the second one, the 20% repair skills on our DPS Walker Harris piece is, you guessed it, completely useless. Again, we're missing 1.3 crit chance, but even having a 2% crit chance roll would be better than having 20% repair skills. I hope I don't need to say it, but the Seska mask is far better than the Walker Harris mask. So stop chasing the perfect rolls and start with getting the right rolls. The more you play, you'll gradually be able to optimize your pieces or find better ones. But you're better off farming hard content for the right rolls than legendaries for random maxed out rolls. So that's it. If you're new to the Division franchise or just reached level 40 and are ready to put together an endgame build, take your time and consider these three points. Your builds will be more effective and you'll have more fun playing the game. So as usual, if this video was helpful, hit the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Until next time, happy farming agents.
System reactivated. System disrupted. System back online. Serious trauma detected. System malfunctioning. Watch out. Looks like troop orders based on the intel you found earlier.